In this video, we're going to begin our discussion on power series. In the previous chapter, we were focused on looking at infinite series where we had an infinite sum of numbers. We're now going to be generalizing this idea to where I have an infinite um, sum that involves powers of x. So we're going to go over our definition of power series and then discuss um, some of the motivation for why power series are so important and some of the places um, where they're used. So when we say we're talking about a power series, we mean here that a power series is an infinite series of the following form. I have a sum from k equals 0 to infinity of ck x to the k, where this can be written out as c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus dot 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 where the nth term would have the form cn x to the n, and then I'd have an n plus 1th term, and then this would just keep going and going. So the idea of our power series is that it's like an infinitely long polynomial. So we just have a sum of these powers of x with these different coefficients. So if I was just thinking about the first n terms of my infinite series, this is an nth degree polynomial. And then my terms keep going and going here because it is an infinite sum that I have when I write down that sum from k equals 0 to infinity of my ckx to the k. Um, more generally, a more general form here of my power series would be the following. I ha could have a sum here from k equals 0 to infinity of ck x minus a to the k. So instead of powers of x, I could have um, powers of x minus a, where this would be c0 plus c1x minus a plus c2x minus a squared. My nth term would be the cn x minus a to the n. I'd have an n plus 1th term of cn um, plus 1, x to the, excuse me, x minus a to the n plus 1. And then this would just keep going and going. Okay, so notation here where my a and my ck here are constants. Okay, we would say that the ck's here are our coefficients, and we call a here the center of the series. Okay, and we'll see a little bit more about why that a would be called the center of the series. But we have these definitions, and um, we recognize that they do look like polynomials that we're used to. They, they're just infinitely long here. So where are these power series going to be used? Okay, what's some of our motivation? So let me list a couple things, and then we'll look at um, one little demo to show uh, a connection here with how um, power series are being used. So what's some of our motivation? Okay, well, one... Uh, place in which power series are used, functions that we're familiar with can be represented by power series. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean that a function that we're familiar with, like cosine of x, for example, could be written as an infinitely long polynomial. And that would be useful because polynomials are just so nice to work with. Um, the only uh, kind of arithmetic that's involved in polynomials is like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So you could um, write down your cosine function as a certain infinite series and then use that infinite series to answer questions about the cosine function. So how else are power series going to be useful? Well, a function can be defined as a power series. Okay, what do we mean by that? Well, we could have a function that we, we don't already have a name for, a function that's not cosine or log or sine or um, anything like that, but you can actually write down a power series and that power series can be a function in itself that doesn't have some other name and that function might solve some important problems. For example, it could be the solution to a differential equation that models some kind of phenomena from um, physics or um, engineering. So you can have functions that are defined as power series and, and solve important applications. We've already mentioned that these power series here are like infinitely long polynomials, which means they have really nice properties. Okay, And polynomials are easy to work with.
So we'll see um, later in this section how we can use um, rewriting a function as a power series in order to take the integral of that function. So we can have integrals that are really messy to take um, otherwise, but if we write, rewrite that function as a power series representation, then we can integrate um, that power series using our power antiderivative rule. So that can be a really nice tool as well. Okay, a uh, big place that it's used, used to solve differential equations. So I mentioned this, but I just wanted to write that down again. Okay, so lots of places where these are used. We wanna really understand these power series um, so that we can, can be able to work with them in, in future uh, math problems that you might see beyond calculus too. Now let's look at the idea illustrating that our unknown function here um, could be represented by an infinitely long polynomial. So here I have my cosine function. I start out with a, a tangent line approximation, but notice that what would happen if I increase the number of terms here, I'm gonna get a better and better approximation. So this is only gonna go up to uh, 10 terms, but I can imagine that as I would let n go to infinity, I would have an infinitely long polynomial that could actually be equal to this whole cosine curve. Um, Notice that my uh, polynomials here are all centered on this point. So when we mentioned that um, a power series was said to be centered at A, if it had that form of the sum of CK X minus A to the K, um, A is where I'm, where I'm basing all those approximations around. So A is like a generalization of that point of tangency that we would have for um, a linear approximation. So we'll look at just one other example here to illustrate um, another kind of thing that we're going to see. So with that cosine function, we saw that the, the infinitely long polynomial, or as I was adding more and more terms, I was getting a better and better approximation for the whole um, cosine curve. But we can also see something like the following. So here I have a graph of one over x plus one. Um, I start out with a nice linear approximation and I can add more and more terms to this and I can get a better approximation. Um, around that point of tangency that I started with, around a equals zero. Um, but I'm only going to be able to get a good um, representation of that function in that in a little interval around one. It doesn't look like I'm, I'm getting a good approximation of what's happening over here or what's happening over here on the graph. Um, so that question of where does um, the power series actually converge to the, the function, where does our, our power series representation of a function actually equal the function? It might be for all x, like we saw for the cosine function, or it might just be for certain values of x where, where a power series representation um, would actually um, equal the function. So we'll look at, at questions of that sort um, a little bit later in this section called questions of the interval of convergence. Where does a power series converge for what values of x? So those will be some things we'll be looking at later. Um, but then in the next video, we'll be talking more about the idea of Taylor polynomials, which is what's being illustrated in this demo, um, which will be the, the form that a polynomial needs to have to be a good approximation to our function.